Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have a fun video topic. I was thinking about what could I film that would be kind of like a good way to explain how YouTube has affected my life. <laughs> That's a little dramatic. No, that would be a serious topic. No, that wouldn't be a serious topic. That could be... Anyways, I was thinking, first of all, raise your hand if YouTube has made you buy something. Raise your hand if you're an um, impulse shopper, especially when it's Sephora. Or online shopping when you're tired and all... you. This, that, and the other thing. So I thought today we're going to talk about things I bought on impulse. Things I was not intending on buying. Things I bought without swatching, without seeing first, like blindly purchasing. And the stories behind them and whether or not I think, yeah, sure, you should definitely buy this. and Or no, no, you should probably not have bought that, Chelsea. And I don't recommend it, so let's get into this. So we're all influenced. We're influenced all the time about different things. Let me move my mirror so I don't have to stare at myself this whole time. Oh, wow, did that just get brighter? Or am I like... No, losing my mind. <laughs> What's new? So anyways, um, I watch YouTube and I get totally influenced, especially when I'm tired or late at night or something new is coming out or you've seen 16 people talk about it and they all love it to death. Um, and so you're like, okay, fine. You've twisted my arm. I will now buy that. So I have quite a few things here. I'm going to go in order of my list, my handy dandy list that I always have. So this first thing is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I've seen a lot of people use this and on a whim, I decided to buy the trial, not the trial size, but the travel size bottle just to try it out. It was only like $18, around the $20 mark, I believe. And if you were to divide out the full price of this and put it into, I think, three travel sizes, you've purchased yourself this. So it's not a bad deal. Sometimes the smaller sizes of things are actually a better deal than buying the full size, which I don't know why that is. But anyways, so it was, it was not a bad deal. Like you weren't getting ripped off for buying the smaller size. So I did and I fell in love, and I absolutely do love this primer. The reason I like it is because it fills in your pores, it smooths out your skin, if you have any texture, it evens that out, your foundation glides on much better, and it does prolong the wear of your makeup. It's colorless, um, it's just, it's really great. I think it's great for lots of different uh, skin types. It's a mineral primer and it is oil free, so if you're oily, still could try this, you know? So yeah, I love it, and that impulse buy turned into a good thing because I ended up committing to the full size. The next thing is definitely an impulse buy. Like, I bought this without seeing it. I ordered it online. I was watching Casey Holmes do some sort of uh, hair or something or another, and she has fabulous hair. And I have to keep that in mind. Like, her hair type is different than mine. Um, just like anything else, like whether it be makeup or hair or skin tone, nail polish, whatever. Like, everyone has different types of hair and so just because it works for her doesn't mean it's gonna work for you but long story short I bought this stuff this is the bamboo smooth candy oil dry oil mist ultimate frizz control for medium hair types medium thickness medium length like that's kind of leaves it open open for your interpretations but it's put out by Alterna it smells good it's a dry oil so you don't want to spray this anywhere up in this area or you're going to have oily hair. But she used it and like the ends and her hair is always like shiny. I like it, but I don't I wouldn't repurchase this. I feel like it's a little too oily and if you if you don't be careful, I mean, your clean hair, especially if you have fine hair like me, and you spray in something like this, it can really weigh it down and make it appear greasy. And I just washed my hair. So now I have greasy hair, which is why it's up like this. So, it's it's fine. I think if you have coarser hair, Yes, this would probably work better for you. That's probably why it says medium hair types. I don't know, medium thickness. Then they need to specify medium thickness. You know what I'm saying? So buy this if you have a certain hair type, maybe. I don't know. Try it out for yourself. I wasn't like, oh, wow, I need this in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> a hair product, two hair products I do really enjoy. These I was influenced by um, Brianna Stanko's sister, Shannon. I miss seeing her on in Brianna's videos. Really enjoyed her. I, I feel like her makeup taste was similar to mine. She always recommend, re recommended things I would totally buy, already own, or like were my, colors that I like to wear. And so, I think she's a hairstylist, actually. But she had mentioned two different hair products. And at the time, I was totally in the market for something like this. And it's since become one of my favorites, and I've recommended it to you, to you guys as well. And this is the Pureology Serious Color Care Color Fanatic Multitasking Hair Beautifier for Perfecting Color Treated Hair. Holy a long name. Basically, this does 21 different things. Eight things in the Prime category, six things in the Protect category, and however many left in the perfect category. So this is your protects against color fade. It's a leave-in conditioner, detangles, makes blow drying faster, moisturized parched hair, 
uh, prevents split end, prevents breakage. You can use it as a heat control or a heat protectant. Here's thing, you know, what the, the, what am I saying? Heat protectant. Um, smooths out hair surface, seals hair cuticle, reduces dryness, controls fizz, fizz, frizz. The frizz <laughs> makes me think of my kid's magic school bus anyways. Okay, reduces static, adds shine. Basically, it does 21 different things. I like this a lot. We're going to put that down before I stumble over more words in the English language. The other thing that she recommended was the Caviar Anti-Aging Rapid Repair Spray Instant Shine and Moisture. This is essentially what I wanted this to be. So this is put out by the same company, but this I think is better for people with more fine hair. Like I have a lot of hair, but each strand is very fine. Okay, so it's it's thin, it's little, it's like little. So you put something heavy on it, it's gonna be like, oh, you know? So this you can put on, let's see, spray over dry hair. It has, uh, let's see, the vitamin pack finishing spray with UV protection helps to reduce damage and adds instant shine and moisture. Ooh, I didn't know it has UV protection in here. Cool. Anyway, so I really like this over this. This is too heavy for my hair. This I love. Woo. Sometimes I feel like I need to take like a yoga class before making a video because I feel like I'm in a train going downhill as soon as I sit down to film because I get so excited and so amped up and I stumble over my words and I feel like I'm just, I'm going to crash. All right, Lisa Lisa D1 has influenced me to buy a lot of things over the years, a lot of things. But the first thing, I think this is the very first thing she ever really influenced me to buy. And I watched several videos before I bought it. And I bought it in my self-tan shade, so I don't wear it as much as I'd like to because it's a very dark shade. But this is the Laura Mercier Silk Cream Oil-Free Photo Edition Foundation. Full coverage, very creamy finish. I can get kind of greasy in the summer with this, especially if it's hot out. But a very full coverage. It's a little bit heavier of a foundation. Very creamy, like, milky skin finish. Um, not very lightweight, a little heavier. I have the shade Cashew Beige, which is like freaking yellow. But when I'm self-tanned, that matches me because, you know, self-tan or blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I do like this foundation. I would like to have it in a more everyday shade. This is just totally not the right shade. But it is nice. It says it's a natural matte finish, but I don't know. I think it's more like natural satin after you wear it for a while. I would not use the word matte. Matte, to me is like a flat paint. This is not like that. This is more creamy, you know, creamy. Ooh, this was another Lisa. Actually, one of Lisa's friends sent her this lipstick, and this lipstick has a story in and of itself, which we'll just bypass, and I will spare you the extra long explanation, but this is a Gucci lipstick. Gucci is expensive, okay? Very expensive. Not as expensive as Tom Ford, but still ridiculous. This is a luxurious lipstick um, in the shade 300 Exposure. Now, I've since been told by one of you guys to check out their other formulation. They have, like, this, which is a more hydrating formula, and then they have something that's a little bit more, I think, satiny. But it's a really pretty color. I don't think I would ever repurchase this because, number one, it's expensive. But I like how it feels on the lips. It's very lightweight and creamy. Something that's very similar would be Max Cream Cup, and that's, like... You could buy three cream cups for the price of this lipstick, which is why this is ridiculous. But the packaging is gorgeous. I mean, just beautiful packaging. Check it out. Awesome. So here's what the color looks like. It's basically like Max Cream Cup, but a fancy version and a little bit more opaque, maybe a hint more pink and less sheer. But definitely not a must-have. But I mean, if you want to splurge on yourself, by all means, go and buy yourself this lipstick because it is pretty. So when this line first launched, I was very intrigued by this product because I love gloss and I love sparkles. So you put the two together and I'm just like, bing, like a magnet, you know? But this is the Lip Luster in the shade Coquette by Surratt. This stuff is sticky. This is the definition of sticky because I, myself, Chelsea Gary, does not mind a sticky lip gloss because if my hair's up and my lips are gonna stay shiny and just gorgeous, I don't mind it. I do mind this formula, however. Um, I would have brought this back, but it was too late by the time I decided I did not like it. The color is really pretty. It's like a very soft, milky pink. Very soft. Let's see. I feel like when I show you swatches with my light turned up, it washes it out, and I want you to see. It's like a very soft, 
milky pink. Lots of luster, lots of shine going on, yes. Oh, holy crap, this is so sticky. This reminds me of those suits. You can dress yourself in like a Velcro suit or whatever and you can run and you can jump and you can stick to a wall. That's this gloss. So Brianna Fox, she's beautiful. She has a channel and she was doing a makeup tutorial. She was doing a matte purple eye like on her lid and then it kind of graduated up into a very warm peachy camely crease and I was like oh, I need those eyeshadows so I bought the three eyeshadows that she used and they are the makeup forever um, artist shadows and this trio was my introduction into the makeup forever artist shadows I I think they're okay these are matte all three of these are matte. I haven't really played around. Ooh, goodness gracious, I almost knocked that over. I haven't really played around with many of their other shadows. I have these three, and then I have two other shades. And these are matte. I don't love the, I think it's the iridescent, or maybe it's the satins by them. They just aren't punchy enough for me. I just like, I mean, if, if it's going to be a satin shimmery, I want to have it be satin shimmery and not like kind of satin shimmery you know if you look close like no I want to know I want to know that I'm wearing a satin shimmery shadow you know what I mean but they're very lightweight they do blend really well they have a ton of colors a ton of colors I like like the, when I go to swatch them if I were to buy any more the ones that draw me in are like the creamier ones they're kind of buttery kind of creamy I think they're like the metallic finish they remind me of say a makeup geek foiled eyeshadow where they're buttery and creamy and super metallic but not like I don't know. I just, I don't know. I like these. I like these colors. So maybe I'll do a look with these again soon. I think I have. I have. I think a while ago. So maybe, maybe check that out if you want to. But anyways, that's what they look like. I do like these. I don't love the price on these. I think, I don't know. I think it's like three shadows plus this plastic thing for $44, which if you're only going to buy a couple, that's fine. But I prefer to have all my shadows together at this point from what I've gathered about myself. So I would probably just buy there because they have a Thing. like a metallicized palette you can just throw them in okay anyways yes oh I suppose you just tell you what the shades are right M726 which is like a matte camely color M738 which is the matte purple and M nope that's not right no M738 is the uh, cinnamon color and the purple is M928 I'll have it all listed below in the description box. Years ago, I was totally influenced by Melissa Autry. Um, her channel name was Melissa Raymond at the time. And she did a one shadow evening date night look with this eyeshadow. And it's Laura, Mer I don't even know if they still make this. I hope they do because it's gorgeous. It's Laura Mercier's Baked Eye Color. You can use this wet or dry in the shade Black Carrot. Oh my gosh, I actually really, really like this eyeshadow. It's gorgeous wet. I mean, it's pretty dry, but it's like, it turns into like a uh, not so shimmery and more like metallicized color. Oh, it was so pretty. I saw her do that. And basically, you just kind of want to deepen up your outer V and then keep your lid a little bit softer and, you know, fade it up into your crease. And I would probably actually pair this with one matte shade in my crease just to have it blend into something. But this is really pretty. I I think she still makes these and there's lots of colors like not lots but like seven I just thought this one was really pretty and really unique and when it's wet I mean it, right now it's like in a black base but it actually looks more olive with gold sparkles in it which I think olive is a very nice way to do a green without being like whoa that's green you know not like ninja turtle green but olive green Oh, Lisette's Beauty, I miss her posting videos. She hasn't posted videos in a while, but I know she's been busy. She created her own jewelry line, which, you guys, is... It's so elegant. It's so chic. It's so classy. Um, I follow her on Instagram, and she's always posting pictures of her new pieces and just, I don't know, just very elegant, beautiful things. So she's busy with that. But when she was posting videos, I was so influenced by her. I bought so many things that she recommended, but two things that... I will never forget because she just raved about them. And this was the first Chanel lipstick I ever bought. And I bought it blindly. I ordered it. 
online after watching quite a few videos of her and I think I don't know if it was a Chanel video or she just wears it I mean she reminds me of Snow White the princess and I believe I've told her that before like the Disney princess Snow White she reminds me of um, and so when she wears a red or a bold pink it's it's her it is her uh, so the Chanel lipstick in La Fascinate which is hands down favorite red lipstick it's just I mean, Chanel makes different tones, so if a blue-based red is not your cup of tea, they do have warmer-based or brick brick reds or like an orangier based red, but this is the epitome of a red lip, and the formula on this is to die for. Lightweight velvet. It feels like velvet on your lips, not heavy. Lasts lovely on the lips, comes off evenly. It's just beautiful. So she was spot on with this recommendation, and I am carrying that on to you. You're looking for a gorgeous red lip? Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet, which is their matte line, but it's basically freaking velvet on your lips. 38 La Fascinate. And the other thing, I'm not sure if you can get this. I think at the time it was limited edition, but you know, like, different companies, they'll put out something limited edition, and then lo and behold, it's suddenly part of their permanent collection, and they made you buy it when you could have waited. You know what I mean? But this is NARS Dolomites Duo. Now, NARS's duos, I have quite a few, but I don't feel like they're consistent. Okay, I feel like that's definitely, like another one off the top of my head that I love is Isolde, beautiful formula. Dolomites, beautiful. Now, some of them are patchy and just, I don't know, not super unique. I love this one. Basically, you get oh, your classic deeper burgundy-ish brown color that looks fabulous on everybody. It's like a beautiful brown. You're like, oh, it's just brown. No, 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 no. It's not just brown. It also looks gorgeous with this creamy iridescent smoky lavender I mean anything with the word smoky and lavender I'm just like what was that what was that I need that because I love smoky lavender colors it, this reminds me of Laura Mercier's amethyst caviar stick which I love this duo this duo is to die for on your eyes it doesn't scream purple it doesn't scream dark it just screams like sexy honestly it's just super sexy on and I love it all right these I bought let's see in December, Stila Cosmetics posted a sneak peek of a new product that they were going to be releasing. And when I saw that sneak peek, I knew I was going to blindly order them. And as soon as they did, I picked one up and I am so happy. I've spoken about these, I've done a video about these, I've worn these to death. These are the Stila Magnificent Metals. Yes, bomb. Okay, so you're thinking, I don't like glitter, Chelsea. You should still, whoa, you should still try these because... They're like liquid glitter, but not chunky, and it's the formula is opaque, and they're not messy to work with. It's stuck, like the product is stuck to the wand. This is the shade Kitten Karma. This is the first one I bought. You, yeah. Okay, wait for it. One swipe. Yep. And then the other color that I bought is Smoldering Satin, which is basically like a pewter, I believe. It's like a taupey color, I can't remember. More like a pewtery color. Both absolutely gorgeous. Totally worth the money. Super opaque. <sighs> I love these. My friend Amy told me I needed to buy this. And she has a very good taste in makeup. And when she likes something, she likes something. And she uses it. And she doesn't like to have big, huge palettes. So when Viseart came out with the little Petite Pro, she was like, oh. And she bought it, and she told me I needed it. She's like, I can't stop using it. It's so gorgeous. It's so little. I mean, it's just a little baby. Oh, my gosh, it's so cute. It's just like a little baby palette. I mean, you're going to order, and you're going to get it, and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, that's so small. But, I mean, this is my hand. Um, so, anyways, it's the same formula as their Viseart mattes, and I love. There are four mattes and four of their more shimmier shades. But they're, this is good colors. Like, they're just really good colors. You get a purple, like a coppery color. They're so buttery. Okay, that finger was already dirty. Okay, we're going to have to move over here. Um, and it's it's a more accessible price. Like, their full palettes are $80, but if you break that down per shadow, it's better than Urban Decay's shadows, like, price point. It's I mean, it's definitely not crazy. Okay, this was a dumb place to swatch. How am I going to show you this? <laughs> oh, they're really pretty, though, seriously. Really pretty. Those are the shimmery ones. They're not, like obnoxious shimmer they're not chunky glitter they're like a mature not mature like old but like a classy way this is stupid Chelsea why would you swatch them on the freaking corner of your arm anyways I do really enjoy this and I think it's a great way to try out the Viseart shadows if you don't want to commit to like 
$80 price point. I want to say this is around $30 and now it's full of dirt. Ugh. Alright. The last thing. Absolute impulse buy. Went into Sephora just to look. I, sh I should know better. I don't window shop because, like, what's the point? It just entices me and tells me, and, like, almost mockingly yells me, Oh, this is so cute. Oh, but you can't have it. I'm so sorry. Like, that's torture to me. I'd just rather not go. But I went in there, and I was walking to the back of the store, and I just kind of went like this, and then I was like, What is that? And I walked over, I swatched it, and I bought it. I do have a whole video on this, but the new um, trio by Hourglass. I love their blushes. I'm actually wearing one of their blushes right now. This is the Ambient Strobe blush palette. So their permanent line of blushes are mixed with their Ambient Lighting Powders. These blushes are mixed with their Ambient Strobe Powders, which are their highlighters. Now, not like a highlighter, like wet, dewy in your face, but like a glowy, gorgeous, highlight from within kind of highlighter. These blushes are beautiful. They blend seamlessly. These blushes are blushes that almost like blend themselves. You can use a crappy brush. You could use your finger. You could use your foot. Like you can blend these so well and they look natural. Natural, not natural like barely there, but natural like, hey, I woke up like this. And I wake up like this every day. I don't know how you wake up, but I love these. Um, so you get three colors, Euphoric, Fusion, Brilliant, Nude, and Irida or Incandescent Electra. So basically like a pretty berry mauve, a nude, and a coral, which is perfect. Perfect trio of colors. Alrighty, so those are all, well, not all. I probably have, I could do like 16 videos. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this and you want me to do another video like this, um, thumbs up, let me know in the comments, and I can definitely think of another list of things that I like impulsively bought or was influenced to buy by somebody else, you know? It just happens like that. <laughs> but sometimes it's a good thing. Like, I'd rather be influenced to buy something good than to go out and shop really hard to buy crap. You know what I mean? So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll chat soon. Bye, guys.